and it hurts the speed, so the reaction is going to be low energy, but we continue. Let's begin. So let's just not tell Selfie and just fuck off and disappear without telling her anything. Surely that's the better thing to do. We gotta go, man. Or else Norn's gonna go and kill herself. Wait. How are we gonna cover that distance unless we have a huge time skip? Like this season part two right now. We're we're at the tail end of it. Are we gonna have a huge time skip? Or is it gonna take forever and the season three is like we're still fucking traveling? Immediately the zooms in. Well, looks like Rudy might have to fuck his great grandmother in law. Why can't he just like make a dildo, bro? Does Erina Rize like actually need a real, like, living, breathing partner? Can it not be just a toy? The chastity cage? The chastity belts. Cliff's gonna get his heart broken. I still it's so sad how, like, she's just willing to just, like, abandon Cliff to go on this adventure, and it's not like, you know, and then it was like, why don't you just wait for him? Like, tell him that you'll just wait. And she's like, nah, Cliff is just like a, this is like puppy love. This wasn't really real. I'm going to go wait. It's like, really? That was it? Bodyguard is still MIA. You can't use me as your magic mule anymore. Bitch, my mom's in danger. You wanna fucking come with us? I get it. Nana Hoshi is like the realization that holy shit, I'm so close to like getting back home. And like you're gonna leave me? I need my battery. Why are you fucking leaving me my battery? But it's like Nana Hoshi, you got more important things to do, okay? Is she understanding about this? You know what I just realized? Now how she wants to be impatient. Bitch, call Daddy Orsted. Orsted, can you go save Zenith and Paul? Can you just go to Begari and go save him? And then he'd be like, you got it, baby girl. And then we'll go there and we'll fucking Orsted will just clear everything for us. And then we just come back home and everything is just fucking great, bro. Imagine that. Why can't we just call Daddy Orsted? Hmm. Magic items? All over the world. Mm, I was like, yo, how what are we gonna do with the fucking eight months back and forth? Two year trip? Nah. Fucking teleport. So she had this all along? Yo, who made these teleportation circles? Also, is it just gonna work that easily? Like, can we really trust it? Like, we go to the one place and we go to just go to Begari. Is it that easy? We need to get to Sharia first, but is it that easy? Why was she forced to lie? Because Orsted didn't want that to happen, right? Orsted, I don't know. Orsted is interesting. Orsted honestly feels like um a type of person where he's like going around trying to maintain like the histories of different timelines are correct because like when we met him in season one wasn't the dialogue something along lines like oh my god eris you're already pretty strong you shouldn't have progressed this fast already implying that he knows the natural timelines and the history and how things should progress and that's why rudy was an outlier right because he's not part of this isekai world he's a fucking otherworlder right so Orsted probably wants to make sure uh, time and passage and shit's not getting fucked up. So he made Nanahoshi not really talk about this stuff yet. Here's another thing. We're going completely off tangent here. But like then we bring that Orsted being like the, the police of time and, and space and making sure that the, the flow of passage of time is going to the script. And then there's Human God. 
And then there's the human God that keeps making this outlier person that shouldn't even be from this world change the events of the natural disaster, like the natural course of the world, right? So it makes a lot of sense why, like, Orsted would, like, hate the human God and, like, what Rudy's kind of doing. Like, an apostle of the human God constantly going around. You're a different variable that wasn't even part of supposed to be the equation. And you're, like, making all this different shit happen that shouldn't be even according to my script, right? Well, hey, we gotta get here before Sophie gives birth. Teleportation is forbidden, right? Governments will erase any they can find. It's like super illegal shit. I mean, it's not like she's doing this out of her good heart. It's just like two years. I can't fucking wait two years. Get that shit back in one month or two months. Episode title? Maybe at the end. It was like as soon as Sylphie announced that she's pregnant is the fucking episode where Rudy's like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking leave my wife. It's just like every fucking anime dead dad man. It's like, what is this? Sophie's awfully chill about it. Don't jinx me. He's gonna come back safe, right? But Mangos said we're gonna regret this. Is it gonna be that simple? We just port in Nanahoshi teleportation, get back in time for Sylphie's birth, like Sylphie's children's birth. Like, I don't think so, man. I don't think it's going to be that simple. <laughs> what is this, bro? Why did the fucking candles fucking almost go off when he just said, I'm going to make it before your birth, bro? Look at this. <laughs> you gotta be trolling me. It's like, <laughs> you have to like, <laughs> you really think that's going to happen? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I should can survive by herself. What about Norn though? Is Norn coming with us? Norn's not actually coming with us. A name? What is it gonna be? Fucking Paul? Fucking, I don't know. Ni, 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 I don't, we don't even know if it's a son or a, a daughter. I didn't know that was a culture here. Oh, it's like even worse fucking flags. Okay, we're definitely not coming back. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I guess his name's gonna be Rouge Jr. She's shaking, man. I love you. <laughs> A little wink to both sisters, bro. <laughs> Don't look now, kids. Linnea Persona. I wonder which one he would have decided to, you know, cheat on Sylphie with. If we listen to the man god, Linnea or Persona. What's going on with Bodyguardi? He just disappeared ever since Rujer. Bodyguardi is just gone? Thank you. And we never got to see the actual principal of the school who was actually pretty important in the Mushoku Tensei manga in the light novel, but just never seen that. Okay. Then we'll quickly bail out my folks and come back the same way. It's just that simple, guys. What could go wrong, man? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing about plans. When you get punched in the face, all those plans don't mean shit. And when Rudy gets punched in the face, what are we going to do? Oh, Cliff. Do you have to wear that over clothes? It's gonna be out night. No way I'm gonna be caught outside wearing that shit, bro. Aren't these flags as well? Isn't this like crazy flag? It's like you're about to set off for like an adventure. When you come back, then let's get married and have a house and everything. This is classic anime flags, bro. 
So, okay, maybe I was jumping to the gun with how Erina Ryusei was assuming that Cliff was just a young boy with puppy love, but actually it was something different, right? You worried I was all talk and she tried to push him away. Got it, got it. <laughs> Will he ever return? <laughs> At the very least, we hash things out with Norm before leaving. More flags? <laughs> the amount of flags! <laughs> like, stop! Stop! Just go! Just go! Stop saying this shit! You don't have to keep saying like, oh, nothing's gonna go wrong. Surely it's gonna be so easy, guys. Nah, we'll be here before your birth. Nothing will go wrong. Did I say that nothing will go wrong, by the way? Safe trip. One last flag from Selfie. Goodbye, Selfie. Man, that's it, bro. That's fucking it. Since we got fucked by Eris back in season one and, you know, her whole shit happens. Everyone was like, you know, who's going to be the next girl to save? It's got to be Selfie. And we're waiting for Selfie and season two happened. And now it's kind of over. Selfie's getting left behind and we leave her. It is what it is, man. So naturally, this means that we're going to meet Eris along the way, right? Is Eris in Begarit right now? Where is she? Can, can we see Eris again? What's going to happen? <laughs> Love how Eden Ariz is the one riding the horse too, not Rudy. All right. Time to teleport. That's been a week, right? A week of traveling. That big horse seems to have a little bit of significance. Maybe Zanoba picked it up for herself, right? So like, if we take this, we should teleport to Begari. We should, right? We should. But like, what if it doesn't work? Is it that simple? Not how she didn't seem to really give a fuck, right? Like, it's all fine. Just use it, right? So it's like, it should work. <laughs> that dragon lived only for conviction. Who are you talking about? Is he talking about Worsted? I wonder why the teleportations are based off of dragons. But then again, in the most recent Danny News episode that we saw, there was a mention of Perugios, and also Perugios was present during the Mana disaster, which was also a big teleportation thing. There's some kind of connection with dragons and teleportations, huh? We're already in the labyrinth? Okay, this is the actual teleportation. That's a season 2 part 1 shit. <laughs> Touch each other. <laughs> Let's hold hands, Erina Rize. Ooh, so lewd. Begari. 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 Okay, it worked. It looks like it worked. <laughs> like, like, take the circle back and go home. Just one second. I would want to try that too. I'm like, yo, what, what if we're like stuck here? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so Edina is gonna take it and then go back. And then what if she doesn't come back? What if she ports somewhere else? Hello? Oh, no. It's over! Orsted? Isn't that Orsted's clothing? Isn't that what he wears? Ain't this Orsted's fucking clothing? Okay, I didn't know back. Oh, 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 oh. Time lag. The passage of time is obviously not the same as when you teleport, so even though it seemed like forever for us, to Erina Rize, it was instantaneous. 
timeline. But doesn't that mean that when Rudy and Eddie and Adeze ported here, like a bunch of time has passed when we got here? Probably not so significant that it would already be like a month ahead. All right, we're in Dune, guys. <laughs> I love how they start playing soundtracks that just sounds like you're in a desert, you know? Like, like who decided these instruments is what the desert represents? Like some Prince of Arabia fucking Aladdin shit. Like, like who, who, who decided these would be the instruments, you know? <laughs> it's just gotta be racist. <laughs> <laughs> like when you go to like Asia, it's like no 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 gong. <laughs> like they, imagine they did that shit. If we went to somewhere like Asia, they put the fucking gong. <laughs> okay. The soundtrack is fucking peak right now, bro. I feel like a fucking snake coming out of a fucking pot. Is this worse than the demon continent, bro? Oh, what are you doing? Wait, wait. <laughs> that's, that's your great, that's your grandmother-in-law. What are you doing? That's your grandmother-in-law, brother. What are you doing? Get your hands off. You can't do this to Cliff. There was some like pink pheromone-like aura there. Yo, I, they didn't tell me about this in the desert. What is this, like a desert harpy? Like, you shouldn't fall for it. It's like a siren. We're getting lured, right? <laughs> Would you still? Would you still? <laughs> Y'all are insane. Buckle shield, one arm, sword to the other. I've never really seen her fight. She can smell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your character, guys? This is your main character? So much development, right? Nah, he's just in his moment of relapse. <laughs> Horny bonk. The chastity, the chastity belt is not just for Inarize, it's for Rudy, bro. I never thought that he would use it on himself. I thought that detoxify yourself meant go rub one outside when I'm not looking. Bro literally has the chastity belt, bro. <laughs> she got us. Doesn't even give Edina Daisy a chance to fight. Well, maybe she like buys time. Okay, I, th I thought they were riding the fucking worm, and I was gonna be like, Shai Hulud, they can ride. What is that thing? Like a turtle? We should get on it. The soundtrack is fucking lit right now, man, but I just figured that it may be a little racist. Or am I? I don't know. Am I Aladdin? Yeah, god damn, this racist soundtrack is fucking slapping though, holy shit! Manhunting? She calls it manhunting, bro. Like, what, what could she have possibly found nearby? I guess we were in like a village. We were near a village, but I'm like, is she just gonna conjure up a man in the fucking sand out of nowhere? どうです何か見えてきましたわ。うん。行ってみましょう。迂回かしら。ワイ。登りましょう。乗ってください。うう、ウェルナリーズイントゥイシンクラッチ。ザホーラスグリフィン。マン、アイミスディズアベンチュリ
Behold the power of Quagmire. It's cool to see Irina Daisy actually in combat too. Are we eating the griffin? Oh, what are you doing with your fingers? <laughs> what was that? What was that? What, what is this? Why is she looking at her fingers after? Hmm. Paul just picks Zenith up, adventuring. Hmm. I wanna know. I wanna fucking know. He probably was fucking Irina Nizi and Zenith at the same time, and then the whole drama happened, right? No amount of apologies could ever make Irina Nizi forgive him. Nothing he can say can make me forgive him. Well, time for a tinfoil theory. Isn't this another flag? Doesn't it seem like people should die in Turning Point 3? I feel like either Eden Arize or maybe Paul would die, and in that moment, Eden Arize would finally feel sorry enough and accept the apology or something. I just feel like something like that would happen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I expect there to be some death to happen in this Turning Point 3, right? I, I, it's gonna be crazy. Like, this is the most dangerous thing that we've ever done so far. And if she's saying shit like this, nothing he can say would make me ever forgive him. What if Paul's about to die? In your arms right now, Irina Rize. Would you then forgive him? I don't know. Like, Zenith might die. Paul might die. I think Irina Rize dying is a prime candidate too, yeah? Just because of the stuff with Cliff, maybe? And that is today's episode. Today's episode was honestly pretty exciting, even though it was just like kind of like quote unquote setup. So my biggest fear was that, you know, it's gonna take how long to get there? Do we even have that much time left in this season? But it's like Nana, she's like, nah, I got the instant teleportation. Don't worry about it. And when we saw the clothing in the closet, when we actually, you know, um, came out, that's Orsted's clothing, implying this is what they were using Nanahoshi and Orsted to travel around the world in those two years. And what? Orsted always wanted fresh drip. So in every teleportation, like um, a place like this, there's like a closet with like what, like an identical copy. Does Orsted only wear the same thing like me? Does he just have like a white shirt prepared in every fucking closet whenever he ports? That's my headcanon. Other stuff in the beginning was just so much fucking death flags, man. So many death flags that nothing's gonna go wrong. I'll be here just in time for, you know, the child's birth. Oh, let me name your child in case I don't come back in time. It's looking like the kid's name is going to be Rudy Jr. Now, there's some stuff with the horse here. Maybe that's some cut content with Zanabo was clutching for us. Neri Narize. He actually, she actually did not, you know. <clears throat> I, I thought that she abandoned Cliff, but it was like her insecurities of cutting him off before he could leave her and then he's just like nah i'm here for the fucking real thing and when you come back we should get married and it's like oh man more fucking flags wonder who's gonna die i think Irina Rize is a prime candidate i think paul and zenith are definitely fair game too hopefully not roxy but hey we're getting there we're finally in begarit the whole soundtrack change in the desert scenes were fucking amazing the random fights against the griffins and stuff while they're not really, you know, imposing threats, it's nice to see us back into the whole, you know, adventuring squad. And it really feels like Quagmire's back. And that's it for me. If you're still here, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.